All right, folks, we are back. And I'm glad you're out there. Truly am. And if you see the number on screen, you can call at 304-591-6993. List on the phone. You can hang up and call back at 304-591-6993 and talk to us. I think everything's working pretty smoothly today, I believe, in the field. It is. Everything is working well. Again, we have a guest with us, and they're part of the family now, coming out from Ohio. But with us, it's amazing. Bill drives six hours. We can't get anybody drive six minutes around here. <laughs> uh, it's amazing. But anyway... I think quite probably the, the truth is that not many people want the truth. Everybody wants their ears tickled. They won't play the game and go in the church. And, and I love <coughs> that. I love giving music. I love all that. But warfare is not always celebrating, is it? No. Warfare, is, warfare isn't always R&R, &R, is it? We need R&R. &R. We have that in between meetings here. I mean, if y'all could hear, hear us here laughing and joking and picking and... We're family. We're brothers and sisters. We, we enjoy each other, don't we? Mm -hmm. uh, and that's what we're supposed to do. But when you're at war, folks, if, if you're not concentrated on the battle, you're going to get killed. If you're not watching out for your, for your fellow uh, comrades in arms, so to speak, they're going to get killed. And the church today has seem, seemingly forgotten the direction she's supposed to head in, and the church is not moving forward. They're retreating. You think they're moving forward? Yeah, they do. But yeah. they are falling. They back. are falling back. Now we're going to do a teaching day. That is, huh? Oh, I was. I talked to him. Okay. <laughs> Y'all overlook him. He's Mohai. high. He can't help it. But anyway, uh, <laughs> we're going to do a teaching day that I guess probably going to shock a lot of people. And maybe get a lot of people really upset, but I don't care. I, I mean, I care, but I, I can't change the truth. We're going to teach, and this is the title of you if you need it. The Christian duty to judge. The Christian's duty oh, yes. to judge. I said the Christian's duty to judge. Did I say that clear enough to understand what I'm saying? I heard you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, how many, I mean, I'm going to answer some questions. I'm going to answer some suggestions. Go along. This probably won't get done in one hour. But we're going to, have to uh, uh, answer questions about people that uh, Christians judging righteously, by the way. The man of the word righteous judgment. But... I'm so tired of hearing, now don't judge me, that's not your place. You ever heard that? Yep. Oh, oh judge not. We're going to cut them a bit. So we're, we're going to take a very, very close look at the Word of God to understand that judging is not only something we all do every day, mm -hmm. but it's a necessity to do it every day. Am I saying something? Is that clear so far? How many of y'all know if you see a rattlesnake, you step on it? <laughs> Is that judging? Yep. If you eat a piece of meat, it ain't seasoned right, you're judging it. <laughs> That's exactly right. So please understand, folks, I'm not trying to cause uh, any kind of type of consternation in your life, but I'm here to tell you the truth. And that because the church has backed out of her duty, Satan's kingdom has gained momentous uh, it, it powers, has it, it not? It triplified itself. It has. It really and has. It is manifesting. Yes, it is. And I, I know I'm saying this, I told you I love, and please understand this, I, 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 we don't get much singing here because we don't have any singers here. We don't have instruments here. And, and again, I love singing. I do. Marsh tell you, we, uh, man, I used to take shot pits once in a while. Mm -hmm. I love singing about the hope in Christ, about the love of Christ, about the hope that's in me. Okay. To know that I've been born again by the blood of Christ, I'm a, I'm a child of the living God, and I sure don't deserve it. You still take shot pits. I do, but not the kind of thing about me. Anyway. <laughs> and that's only when he's in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> but with all sincerity, I'm, I'm overly well, overwhelmed sometimes with the love of Christ and excitement. I, even sometimes studying the Bible, I'm sure going to yes. I get excited because the Word is so good, so powerful. Mm -hmm. And he's talking to me. He takes time to talk to me, Butch Paul. Sometimes he won't do that. Well, I take it back. Sometimes it talks a lot. But anyway, but the point of it is this. Yeah, seriously, we, all sincerely, well, folks, the excitement of knowing that you're really, literally a child of the living God through no no, no merits of your own, <coughs> through the sincere mercy, grace, and forgiveness. If you don't, if that doesn't make you get excited inside to understand what Christ did for you, I doubt he's done it for you. Any comments so far? So don't please don't think that I don't enjoy singing. I do. I, I do kind of miss that once in a while. I enjoy the rejoicing part of it. I do miss that. <laughs> but I don't 
understand why churches think they go to the, into the building and call the church two or three times a week and that's all they do. They may preach a sermon. That's wonderful. But folks, the battle's not there. The battle's out there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You understand this, don't you? Yeah. you Satan is not going to bring these people to hear you if he can help it. you got to take it to them. Mm-hmm. You're right. mm-hmm. Why does the church do that? Didn't he, didn't he say go into a whole, the whole, the world, and disciple all nations, teaching them whatsoever I commanded you? Disciple means what? Teach. To teach. Disciple. Yes. So we're to teach them his laws. True? Amen. We're to teach them what righteous living is. So in order to do that, then I have to assume that most of them are not living righteously. Well, wasn't it a time, Butch, that the church used to go out to the world to bring the world into the church? Absolutely. Now the world's coming to the church. You got a call. And brought yep. the church in. We have. Brought, Welcome in. Brought the church out. Hello? Hello? Hey, is that Liz? Yes. Come on in. Everybody everybody in chat wants to wish you a happy birthday. Oh, well, thank you all so much. I appreciate that. We'll clap for them. That's so sweet. Thank you. Okay, have a fabulous day. Thanks, sweetheart. Talk to you later. Okay, bye. Bye-bye. That was sweet. Some people love me. <laughs> it's a pity you're not with those people. <laughs> <laughs> I get it back sometimes. Uh, you're gonna be nuts on your head, so that you can't oh, I know it. But yeah, you know, that's what a friendship is. She's my best friend. She really is. I mean, when I go places, I want her with me. If at all possible, like, like she is there, I feel more secure when she's beside me. Is that okay? Say that. I'm glad you don't want me to do that. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, we'll look a few verses there. I want you to look with me, okay? Don't take my word for good morning. You look at the Bible and see if I'm reading it, right, reading it right to you. And if you see anything you want to comment on, please feel free. The phone is open. Everybody in here is welcome to comment on anything because I want you to understand what this is an important lesson. I say all the lessons I do are kind of important, I guess, but this one is important enough that it may help us grow up a little bit to understand that we haven't fulfilled our duty. Is a soldier supposed to do what he wants or what the commander says. What the commander says. Anybody here military besides me? Okay. You know when they say, they don't ask your opinion, do they? No. They didn't say, Steve, do you want to do this? No. Nope. They say, Steve, go clean, scrub that pot, go clean that toilet, whatever, right? Yeah. And Steve said, yes, sir. You said anybody in here in the military beside me, you should have said anybody in here married beside me. <laughs> <laughs> you see, folks, we enjoy each other. We do, but this is serious. Now, in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, Paul ran to the church of Corinth, of course. Now let's look at verse 3. Now pay attention. Know ye not that we shall judge <coughs> angels. <coughs> What's your Bible say, Addison? Same, same exact thing. Huh. How much more things that pertain to this life? Does it say don't judge because it ain't your place? Nope. It says don't you know that you have to judge here because you're going to judge angels. Actually, but judging angels is happening now because I know when I do deliverance. Oh, yeah. yeah. And when that demon spirit's coming out, He's being escorted to hell. So that is judgment. So do you understand the seriousness of what I just said to you? If we can't even judge righteously by the laws of God in this world, how are we supposed to judge angels? Now let's drop down a few verses. Now I'm going to show you some real hard judgment here that Paul wrote. Now this is judgment. You know this book's full of that? You know when somebody says it's a sin, that's judgment? Is it not? Mm-hmm. Verse 9 says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Is that judging? Well, Come on, talk to him. Is that judging? Mm-hmm. Be not deceived. Neither fornicators. That's people with sex outside of marriage. Before marriage. That's not adultery. That's before marriage. Nor idolaters, 
Let me explain to you what an idolater is. Anything that's between you and God that's more important to you than God Almighty is an idol. Mm -hmm. I don't care whether it's... God than you are. Exactly. I don't care whether it's money, fame, family. If it's between you and God, that's your God. And if you obey man over God, he's your God. Yes. You feel any comments so far? I see you right. thinking. Oh, yeah. I'm watching the gauges. You, you, okay. Am I pegging them? You're, you're okay right now. <laughs> Anytime that we accept man's law contrary to God's law is idolatry. Hey, man. Oh. Hello? Hey. Hi. Hi. Who am I talking to? Is this Pastor Butch? Yes, it is. Hi, Pastor Butch. Uh, my name is Annette. I just spoke to Phil Rudolph. Um, is this the number for the Bible study? Is, uh, yes. Well, that's the number you can call in on. The number the number to listen on is 515. What is it, Phil? Uh, I don't have... Uh, oh. <laughs> uh, okay, I, I hang on a second. I'll, I'll, I'll get you the number to listen on. Uh, the number to listen on starts with 515. I know that, but I don't remember the rest of it. Hang on one okay. second. Well, where, where about okay. you calling from? Um, it's, uh, I'm on New York. New York, all right. 515. 515-606-606-5830. 5830-5830. Then you have to dial a code in, which is 895. 895-5509. 895-5509. 895-5509. 895-5509. Five zero nine. No, so that's, there's a number on the on that link on that information page. No, uh, well, right, the, let me, the, the, let me the, make sure the, the the code has two fives in it. Eight nine five five zero nine. Two five has two fives in it. And the number behind your head is the number she called. You got it. That's the call. Mm -hmm. All right, let me make sure I got this right. The code is eight nine five five zero nine. Eight nine five five zero nine. Eight nine five five zero nine. And, okay, that's the code. Right. And then the number is 515-606-5830. That's it. Okay. Can I ask you one question before I leave this call? Of course you can. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I, um, I've i been also listening to uh, Peter Kershaw and this whole free ministry of free church thing. Um, and I'm wondering the way you're set up. Um, are you operating as a free minister? As free minister? Absolutely, we have no we have no numbers here at all. We're totally a free body of believers. Uh huh. And do you are are you able to get a cell phone or other I don't know services as church assets? No. No. Okay. By the way, we have Peter Kershaw as a guest. He spoke on church and corporation. Yeah, Peter Peter Kershaw spoke to us. It's been a while back on church first, and corporation. First, first seminar. Uh, at a first seminar years ago. Uh -huh. That's where I remember him. So is that something that's still not able to be done? I mean, to operate completely as a free church with all your assets you know, in the church, that is not something that, I don't know. We're not well, well in, in, in order to be uh, what they say you have to be today, you're not a church, you're a corporation. Mm -hmm. And you're under, under the, uh, the control of the IRS, actually. So it's a call of 501c3 call in the IRS code. We don't have that. We, uh, our, our finances are done privately. We use cash. We, we pay for speakers to come. We pay them with cash. Everything we do, we pay our own expenses with cash. There's nothing here that the government's involved in because they have no business in our business. And we put nothing in our name. Right. Right. Expenses at church, not okay. Yours. Okay, I'll get on the other call. Thank you for answering my question, and I look forward to the Bible class. Well, thank you so much, sweetheart. Thank you for calling. Thanks. Bye bye. Thank you so. Bye bye. That's a great call. Mm -hmm. It was. Any comments on that before we move on? People want to know. Hey, that's exactly right. And uh, she has <coughs> done some education, <coughs> so she does <coughs> beginning to understand. Folks, calls, all these calls are important to us because we want to know we're reaching people. We're not here just for a hobby. We, we, this is a call. This is a calling. I mean, sincerely, I mean this before God very humbly. I, this is not a paid calling. I don't get a salary out of this. I never asked for a salary. My, my salary is paid by God Almighty, and it's, it's a huge blessing, okay? Back to what I was saying, though. I just read to you in verse 3, 1 Corinthians 6. 
that we have to judge in these things pertaining to life and because we're going to judge angels. That's what you think about that, seriously. Mm -hmm. is, is that a powerful statement? Yes. Yes, it is. Um, you know, and on top of that, we have to be very, very, very careful because one day, when we make mistakes today, one day angels will go, when, when we are in heaven with Jesus, angels are going to go, but why did you do that? Why did you make these mistakes? So we have to be very careful what we're doing now. That, well, we're to live as holy as we possibly can in the body of flesh. Thank God for grace and the rest of it, but I'll tell you what. Does anybody here have trouble beside me living completely righteous? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, anyway. Does anybody beside me have a problem that sometimes finding that sin in your life? Sometimes it's still a struggle to work over. Oh, it is every day. Yeah. That's a whole sermon there, Pastor. <laughs> I have to crucify the flesh every day, don't you? Yeah. But anyway, back to what I was saying, verse 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators. Remember, that's <coughs> sex before marriage. Mm -hmm. And this, and this uh, are there. So, sex before marriage is a deadly sin. Y'all know that's Bible. Yep. Nor idolaters, anything between you and God that you serve be, uh, be served before God is an idol to you. I don't care what it is, it's an idol. Nor adulterers. Now, see, we have the adulterers come in to point, to point this to separate between fornicators and adulterers. Adulterers is sex outside of a marriage bed. All right? Nor effeminate. Now, that, that is not homosexuals. That are, those are men who are soft and womanish. May I submit to you that the church is full of, of effeminate men today? If you can even find them in the church. I mean, they're everywhere. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. The church is full of them. Mm -hmm. They were I don't know, wear three piece suit and smell real good, but they have no backbone. I have I've had preachers tell me they do a Christian show, but we don't talk about abortion and stuff. We don't want to be controversial. How in the name of God you be a Christian not be controversial? In a world full of wickedness, tell me how you not be controversial. That's because you want to keep the don't wait to be not be controversial. It's compromise, mm -hmm. and compromise is a sin. I don't get this. These are feminine men. That, that, that he just said that feminine men will not get into the kingdom of God. I don't care if you go to church or not. If you're a feminine man, no backbone, wishy-washy, mammy pammy, panty wasted, you're not going to God's kingdom. Did I make that real clear? So repeat that. You know what's funny, Butch? Yeah. Not funny, sad. There's people in the pulpit, people in the church today that are so, oh, I got it. And there's people out there on the street that they really don't have it. And the people on the street stand more of a chance of getting to God's kingdom than those oh, public I agree. preachers. I mean, that's what the Pharisees and, and the, and the, and the sinners, remember the public Sadducees. Dead men's bones. Mm -hmm. Nor abusers of the self of mankind, which is homosexuality. That's what that is. So you tell me that the Southern Baptists who let their homosexual join the churches and say they're, they're saved and join the body of Christ, you mean they're not going to make the kingdom of heaven? Well, what does the book say? The whole church is that's exactly right. Nor thieves. What's a thief? Well, what does the Bible particularly say about somehow that you steal from God? What is the one thing he said, if you don't do, you steal from me? You can make adultery. Well, no, no. no I'm, I'm talking about nor thieves, like stealing oh. something. What oh. is the one thing God said, if you don't do this, you're stealing from me, I'm going to turn the story loose on you. Tithing. Tithing. Mm -hmm. Duh. There it is. Nor covetous, which means you covet something somebody else has. It's not that you, you want, you, you, you're, you're envious, you're lustful for something that isn't yours to have. Nor drunkards. I had a lady one time, I've known for years, I had a really dial, and he was a drunkard. And I said, well, the, the Bible says he won't make him to heaven. You mean drink and keep you out of heaven? Well, I said, let's look, let's look the book. I can't help it, Phil. I didn't write this. No revelers, that means lascivious type of people that just right. do anything they want to. Nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of the God. So what I just said to you in chapter 6, I said we teach them on the duty to judge. Did Paul not just lay out a bunch of material to judge by? Mm -hmm. Any comments, Phil, anything? Uh, God gave us a brain, he expects us to use it. Sometimes it hurts, though, don't it? And he, he's given us the plumb line, so. Matthew 15.
Now, talk, now people say, but if you judge somebody, you're going to offend them. I hope so. So, right now, that's the one thing you're not allowed to do. Not allowed to do anybody. Yeah, if you're not doing any good. Yeah. Do you have to remind people, too, just if you mess up, doesn't Thank mean you, that lady. you can't repent? And no, that's that's the whole and point. They yes. Feel, yes. So, you were a drunkard at one time, and you. You can give it up if you want exact, to. Right. Salvation is yours through Christ freely. Amen. I understand that, but we have to let them know first that it's sin. Do you know the church is they don't want to preach the law because the law offends? Without the law, you don't get grace, and Christ died for nothing. And the law was gone. Do you understand what I'm telling you, people? I'm getting excited here. Without the law of God saying that you, you need redemption, why do you preach the Bible at all? What, what, no, why, why preach the kingdom? Right? Sure. Let's just preach out of the other ones. The law of God brings us to salvation, does it not? Yes. Amen. So if you're not preaching the law of God to lost people, all you're preaching is grace to them, you're doing no good at all. If they don't know they sin, how do they know to repent? The repentance no man can, can, be, can be born again. Is that true? It's 100% true. If you love God, you got to keep His law. Exactly. <laughs> I'm all like, you're all like to hell. Now, folks, this is, uh, we're this not person. telling you that you cannot be redeemed. Praise God. I want you to know something. Matter of fact, let's go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 6 very quickly. Please. I didn't leave. Oh, yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> it's important. First Corinthians chapter 6, we're going to go look at one verse here. Now pay attention, because they're about to point up and need you brought out. Paul's telling the people, these are things that keep you out of the kingdom of God, right? Look at verse 11. And such were some of you. But ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. But such were some of you. Every one of us in this room deserves damnation. Am I telling the truth, Joe? We don't, we're not worthy of God's grace or His mercy. No, we're not. So when we're, we're preaching this, folks, to show this, 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 this the, the sin and the judgment of this, we're not telling you that we're, we're perfect. We were not. We're still aren't, but we're redeemed. And the redeemed of God must say so. And the redeemed of God will try to live righteously and gloriously for Him because we are His redeemed. Anything you want to say, Steve? And then you're supposed to be an ambassador. There you go. Representative. Now, ambassador does what? Goes out and says, tells people what he wants to tell them? Mm -hmm. Yep. The, Power of attorney. What, the, what, what he's it, been disciplined. What his tell. sovereign said tell, right? Right. First Corinthians chapter, uh, I'm sorry, Matthew 15. Now listen to what Christ is doing right here, and this is going to make up, I mean, Bob. Uh, who's to be our example? Mm. Christ. Is Christ? Christ. All right. It need to be what we're to, we're to uh, try to attain into as far as living in this earth to feel His will. It, it need to be our example before the world. No, I'm looking something up for y'all. Look at me. Okay. <clears throat> Verse one. Then came then came the Jesus scribes and Pharisees. Now I'm taking my time because I want everybody to see this. Who were the scribes and Pharisees? The lawyers and teachers of that day. They were the church members. Yeah. They were the head of the church. True? Mm -hmm. They would call evangelists maybe or, or I don't know, uh, priest or whatever. Well, you couldn't be a Pharisee unless you knew the doctrines of the law. That's but true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then came to Jesus, the scribes and Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem, saying, Why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? Now notice, I'll pay attention. This is important. They didn't say why they transgressed the law. Why do they transgress traditions? Yeah. Woo! -hoo. Is there a difference? Mm -hmm. Is there a difference? Yep. You try to change somebody's mind to Christmas. Oh, yeah, exactly. Or Easter. Yeah, yep. Yep. Why did they transgress the traditions of man? They didn't, they didn't accuse you of saying, why did they break the laws of God? How many of y'all caught that before? Mm -hmm. When you read it, you're catching for it. Mm -hmm. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. That's not a bad idea to wash your hand for you. Eat. That's not, yeah, they didn't, I do it. Yeah, but common that, sense. Yeah, but they're accusing of something bad here. 
But he answered said, Then why do you also transgress the commandment? Now, do you see what Christ did to them? You <coughs> said, I transgress the tradition of man. I say that you transgress the commandment of God. Mm-hmm. Which do you think is most important? Commandment, the commandment of God. Yeah. He said, You can transgress the commandment by your tradition. Oh, Addison, we're in a mess. Traditions of men that go against the laws of God is a sin. Anybody get that side of me? Mm-hmm. For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and thy mother, and he that curses his father and mother shall let him die the death. But ye say, Whosoever shall say to his father and mother, It is a gift that by, by whatsoever thou mayest be profitable. In other words, you're just blessed, I'm yours. <laughs> Talk about cocky, huh? <laughs> my, my dad would have something to say about that, probably. Well, dad, you're just lucky to have me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you think, Butch, that you know these big church preachers, and you don't give to them their offering plate. It's the same thing. Oh yeah, <coughs> it is. <coughs> and honor not his father or mother's mother; he, he should be free. Thus, ye have made the commandment of God of none effect by your tradition. <coughs> now, I got ask you a question: Is Christ judging? <coughs> How's he judging? By his own ways, own thoughts, or by the Word of God? Was that a harsh judgment to them? Mm -hmm. Ye hypocrites! Man! Talk about judging! Well, did Isaiah prophesy you saying, This people draw up mind me with their mouth, and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Judgment, judgment, judgment. Do you know you can go to churches everywhere and they jump up and down and shout and praise God? And I'm not saying they're not Christians, but that's not the point. But they never get into the meat of the battle. Am I telling the truth? Yes. Why? Yep. We're just waiting on the rapture. Oh, they are. Spiritually mm-hmm. malnutrition. I, I mean, they're, they're waiting. They're, they're, as, as Hebrews 5 teaches, they're not, on, they're not on meat yet. They're all she, milk. She said it. Physically yeah, yeah. malnourished. Yeah, they're, 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 they're malnourished. Now, I know this sermon is probably coming across pretty hard. But folks, we don't have time to play games. We're out of time. <coughs> this people, I said, but in, but in vain, oh God help us please, <coughs> but in vain do they worship me. Mm-hmm. Teaching, for, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. That makes me want to cry. In vain do they worship me. Bill, comment? It is what it is. Obedience is worship. Worship is obedience. Mm-hmm. Let that sink in. Obedience is worship. When the, when the apostles were being stoned and whipped and locked in prison, they were worshiping God. Yeah. Mm. Without even raising their hands and praise God, because that felt good, I want to do it again tomorrow. No, that wasn't, a, that wasn't it. They were obeying through the hard times, which is worship before Almighty God. Mm-hmm. Worship the worship demands obedience, and obedience demands worship because through your obedience. Do you understand what I'm trying to tell you this? This is important. Worship is not all the time jumping up in circles and, sh- and praising God. That's all wonderful. But when you're in the pit, when Paul being stoned outside the city gates almost to death, mm-hmm. he was worshiping God. Because he's obeying God. Yeah. There's a verse in Isaiah 30, uh, 29, 13 that says. Wherefore the Lord said for as much as this people draw near me yeah. with their mouth and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me, and their uh, and their fear towards me is taught by the precept of man. That's why you say it right here. Mm-hmm. Yep, same thing. And them all, and, and he called them all to and said unto them, Hear and understand. Not that which goeth into the mouth defileth a man, but that which cometh out of the mouth that defileth a man. What do you mean? What do you mean by that? <clears throat> what comes from his heart? Out of the, out of the mouth, out of the heart, the mouth mm-hmm. speaketh. Yes. You follow? It's what's in your heart that comes out that defiles. If it's in your heart that's defiling, you need to get out there, don't you? And verse twelve says, "Now pay attention, because this is important." Then came his disciples. <laughs> then came his church, so to speak, his own flock. And said unto him, Knowest thou not that the Pharisees were offended? <laughs> After they had heard this saying? Sounds like today. Oh my, well, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to offend anybody. I take it all back, you guys. I'm sorry. 
I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to upset you, hurt your feeling, make you feel bad. He needs to be sued. Yeah, need, need, that's right. Please don't sue me. Don't take away my five hundred and three status. But that same verse you just here. I've heard the he church said, today. On right now. <laughs> yeah, he's older. You're but right. I, I've heard the church today say that to me. You cannot judge. They get offended. Yeah, I love. I love offending people. I, I, well, now, listen, folks. This is important because right there, his disciple said. Now his disciple word. He offended the church leaders. Now, did they crucify Christ because he was so nice to them? No, no. he was seditious. Will you be attacked if you, if you tell the truth? Definitely. Mm -hmm. But he answered and said unto them, and said, Every man, every, every plant which my heavenly Father has not planted to be rooted up. What did you say? He said, These are not my followers. They're hypocrites. They're false teachers. He called them, he called his Pharisees and scribes children of Satan. Did he not? Mm -hmm. Did he not? But then they stand behind the pulpits every every Sabbath morning and preach the gospel, so to speak. Let them alone. Don't follow them. Judge them and know what they're doing and depart from them. If you don't, they will lead you into the same direction because they did blind lead the blind. Mm -hmm. Boy, that's hard judgment, isn't it? And she'd be enough quiet. Those people needed to the teachers, the scribes and the Pharisees, what Jesus was talking about is they needed to be confronted with more than one. And if they didn't change their ways. Then we can walk away. And did, did Christ tell the truth because he hated them? No. Did Christ not die for them also? He did, but at the same time, he couldn't stand them. No, he couldn't. Self righteous. Mm -hmm. You see, he had, he had less trouble with sinners. Well, they were sinners. But he had less trouble with those outside the church than those in the church. Yeah. True? It's often the way it is. It is. It is. I don't think they had corporations back then, but that was the corporate church he was talking about. <laughs> That's very true. Yeah. Yeah. It said, if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. Now, I, folks, I know that this is more than probably y'all have ever heard taught anywhere in, in, the, in your churches about what we're supposed to do as Christians. Can I say something about you? You sure can. You know, when people don't realize that today the church really needs to expose the dark kingdom. They need to bring it up. Because a lot of times in the church today, but the thing is, as righteous, Satan is actually behind it, manipulating people, and they think they're doing right things. This is when you become a Pharisee. And in reality, you're giving credit to Satan, you think it is of Jesus Christ. You know, we got to stop remember, folks, that our sin is not hidden to God. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> we can fool people all day long. <laughs> Paul teaches us fools in the country of 200 years. We can't fool God for a second. It might be a lot of surprised people who go to church three, four times a week and wake up in heaven, glory one day in heaven and he's been, you weren't one of mine. And see, they're bound the doctrines of demons. Sure. Now, we are all guilty of many times looking, not looking at the scripture deep enough to understand what it's saying to us. So we're going to get into, we're going to get into, into the actual verse in a minute and judge not that you be not judged. Everyone quotes that in Matthew 7. They misquoted. But we're going to look at that and find out exactly what it means beyond what people... Oh, there it is. It's like Romans 13. They read the first two verses and stop. They don't go any further. We've got to obey all the laws of man. That isn't what the book says. But they read the first two verses and preach We See, that proves it. We've got to obey the laws of man. Is that not telling the truth mm -hmm. on that? I want, to, I want to show you something just to give an example of how much we don't go into detail. And I, I'm guilty... I just started doing this several years ago now, but I started looking words up in concordance and the Webster Dictionary mm -hmm. to understand the deeper meaning of what the word really is. We, we know a basic understanding of the word, but we don't always understand what it really means in, de in depth. Like in Daniel 8.27 uh, or 8.25, where it says that, that, the, that the Antichrist will cause prosperity, to, or will cause, Phil, I lost my thought now. What, what, say, what was that teaching I taught on that? Satan's final deception on the earth, Daniel 8.25. Peace. Uh, yeah, he'll, yeah, he'll bring peace into the world. Now, look up the word peace. It means false security and prosperity. Mm -hmm. He's bringing prosperity and false security to the people. I mean, give up your guns. Please, please protect us. 
Mm-hmm. You know, and we're saved. But look, look at Luke chapter 2, just an example. Luke chapter 2. Because we were just brief about, about when Christ was uh, born and, and what the decree of Caesar Augustus was. And I want to show you what one word there means in, in some detail. But I make a little closer to what, uh, what it really is. Luke chapter 2. In verse 1 it says, It came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. Now everybody says, oh, well, I don't understand. They wouldn't pay their income taxes. Mm-mm. That wasn't mm-hmm. what it was. Now, I may, I may be a part of it. That word tax means registered. Mm-hmm. They went in to be registered. Does that ring a bell to anybody today? Mm-hmm. And, th- and this registering was first made by Syria, of Governor Syria. And all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. Registered, of course, that means that you could be taxed. That, you, that you're numbered and counted. That's what registration is all about. So if it goes beyond just paying a tax, no one, has, no one would have to cross country to just pay a tax. They would collect it at their home probably. But they went to where they were born to be registered in a place they were born in. Ever heard of birth certificate? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Isn't it amazing? Oh, paper <laughs> it's amazing how up to date this book is. Isn't it? Nothing new under the sun. No, there's not. Let's go to Psalms. <clears throat> Bill, you've been off quiet today. You're getting worried. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to keep the sound normalized. <laughs> I'm sorry for getting too around bunches here. Well, you go from about <laughs> 2 decibels to about 120. <laughs> 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 it's smoking, Captain. It's smoking. <laughs> <laughs> but that's I, good preaching. I, I like thinking some good teaching, too. I really would because I think it's important. Has anybody learned anything so far? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Is it yeah. blessing you? Mm-hmm. Yes. Does it encourage Three you? Mm-hmm. Psalms. Uh, That's the most important. Thirty-seven. Thirty-seven. You're burning up my fingers, Pastor. You're burning I, up my I, fingers. I, yeah, I, I, I want. Oh, God knows, I mean this. I want to be the servant that He wants me to be. I fail miserably. What is that? Somebody's phone going off. It's. It's. I want to be the servant they want me to be so desperately, yet I keep getting my own way. You ever do that? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. You ever trip over your own feet? Mm-hmm. I do it all the time. Well, worse now, I've got older. But... <laughs> <laughs> how, often, how often you felt that I'm doing the right thing and then can you find out it's not? No, yeah. Yeah, I had that Phil teach me the other day how to put my pants on scientifically. Yeah, that's right. We did it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was the way you mean, preacher. Uh, I, he, my grandpa told me as a little boy said, only a lazy man puts his pants on sitting down. So I remember that. And I put my pants on stand up. But you I'm, realize, grandpa never lived to 70 years old. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I really, now we know the reason. But, but now, but then I know it's a little <clears throat> more difficult to hold up one foot, put the other foot in without tripping over pants. Mm-hmm. Phil said, then you have to think about this, Butch. You act like you're going to stand on your right foot for 30 seconds. Makes it easier because not just stand for a second, you'll stand for 30 seconds. Just act like you want to stand your foot for 30 seconds. You get down, put your bad pants on. And I tried that, and you do, it works. When you concentrate, stand on one foot to just try and do it real quick. Just hope you don't get to foot, your leg in the wrong hole. <laughs> <laughs> so, listen, folks, this is serious teaching, but God didn't say we couldn't enjoy ourselves. The Bible thinks it's a merry heart working good like in medicine. I just turned 71 today, so I need that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, Psalms. 37. Glory, <clears throat> one verse there. Ask to read verse 28 to us, real life. For the Lord loveth judgment. Wait a minute, stop a minute. Lord, what now? Psalms 37. Yeah, read it. So, well, go ahead. What, what's the first part again? For the Lord loveth judgment and mm-hmm. forsaketh not his saints. They are preserved forever, but the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. And what, did God say, I hate judgment? Don't you dare judge? There's also another verse besides that one. 29 is good, but in verse 30 it says, The mouth of righteous speaketh wisdom, and his tongue talketh of judgment. I, I had a good one. I didn't see that. Mm-hmm. The mouth of righteous speaketh wisdom, and his tongue talketh of judgment. Yeah. Ooh, we, Joe. You just give them a hard hit between the eyes. 
Psalms 106. My favorite chapter. Psalms 106. Verse 3. My Bible don't go past 100. You get one of those Mormon Bibles? <laughs> Psalm 106. <laughs> verse 3. <clears throat> Blessed are they that keep judgment. And he doth righteousness at all times. So far, have you seen where God said we shouldn't judge? Have you seen anywhere yet where we shouldn't judge? Alright, let's go, let's go to Psalm 119. <clears throat> Butch, what he does say is righteous judgment. Yep, that's what he says. <laughs> he must judge righteously. And how we know it's righteous? It's in line with the word of God. It's line with the word of God. If, they all, if it's out of our thoughts and preferences, we're probably wrong. Well, you know, one of the things I judge a person calls himself a prophet on is one thing I judge. When he speaks of a prophecy of today, Say you line it up with the word of God. You mean he has to righteously line it up with then the <clears throat> judgment it comes against him. Psalm one nineteen verses let me see, uh, verse sixty six. Says what, Joe? <clears throat> well let me look at verse sixty six. <laughs> We're getting there. Okay. Sixty six. Teach me good judgment and knowledge. For I have believed thy commandments. So I'll tell you just said it. How we judge righteously? He teaches his commandments to us. Mm -hmm. Any comments from anybody else? Now we're gonna to go to Matthew seven. Wrap up that day probably. Thank you. A girl read that whole chapter. Psalm one nineteen. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Beautiful chapter on judge. I mean, on uh, keeping God's statutes. And it's great for apologetic oh, arguments. Mm -hmm. The spirit really determines you. You say seven. Yes. I'm going. It's going to take a bit of time for this. I'm not going to rush through this because this is what everybody uses to condemn us for speaking the truth. Chapter seven, verse one. It's quoted everywhere by so many people who do not want the gospel of Christ. Oh, you got to forget the verse two goes along with it. We, we, we got long. We're going to go through the whole chapter. Okay. Chapter seven. seven. Judge not, that you be not judged. Now, by God, if we stop right there, we can settle a whole, whole dispute, couldn't we? Mm -hmm. Addison, you get drunk, you want to. Steve, you can go out and run around with anybody you want to. No big deal. I'm not judging. Isn't that, isn't, that, isn't that the verse they quote all the time? And then they stop right there, don't they? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to look up the word judge, by the way. I looked up the concordance. This is why I need concordance. This is why you need concordance, folks, and a Webster Dictionary. The number for the, the number for judge in concordance is 2919. This is what it means. I pay attention. To distinguish or decide. Well, in order to distinguish something, you have to decide something, don't you? Mm -hmm. If you decide something, you pay judgment, didn't you? If you walk out the yard... And you see a tree and has apples on it, you say, well, that's probably a plum tree. <laughs> you don't have any plum <laughs> trees, Bush. <laughs> oh, it's no plum apple tree. tree. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but you see the point of it is we look right at it and say, well, that can't be what it is. We ain't allowed to judge. That might be an apple tree that thinks it's a plum tree. And who am I to judge? So we're You're describing the spectrum. crazies right now. <laughs> yeah, they're right. Oh, yeah, they're what right. What it really is just a grape tree. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was a brown thing. I mean, we have to judge. Do, do, do courts, the do judges judge? Do juries judge? Yes. Yep. We have to judge. If if only righteous men, I mean, I'm talking about purely, if only pure, perfect men could judge, we'd never have any judgment at all because none of us pure and perfect. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's pretty deep, isn't it? That even sunk in my head a little hard. Thank you, Lord. Perfect men are not, there's no perfect men in here. I mean, I mean, perfect people in this room, raise your hand. <laughs> so, okay. Anyway, it says, it says to distinguish or decide, call in question, determine, conclude, esteem, or condemn. That's what the word judge means. So I look at the apple tree and I say it's an apple tree because it's got apples on it, 
I made it. I made a termination, haven't I? It's a judgment. It's a judgment. A fruit inspector. That's what that is. We're getting that minute. You're getting ahead of me, woman. Anyway, you get the, that's all part of, folks. We must judge. Uh, how do you how do you know when, when a child back talks you that you that you should correct that? Is that not judgment? Maybe you just express yourself freely. You don't believe the child should express yourself freely? You're talking about the crazies again. There we go. <laughs> and Phil's told by one of his sisters that tree in the backyard had rights. <laughs> Yeah, I, I had a teacher tell me, yeah, I couldn't cut that tree down because it has rights. I said, if that tree falls on this house, it's history. <laughs> there but, you go. but the tree yeah, has rights, yeah, and i yeah. got to protect it. Right? Are we talking about the tree that's 250 years old behind? Yeah. One that takes about six men holding hands to get around it? Takes takes over three. Three can't reach around it. Okay. Now, now we're going to get into the part <coughs> I mentioned a minute ago. Before we can judge, we must make sure that we're not leaving the same scene. That's right. Act first line. You understand that? Now you'll never find Butch Paul perfect in this world. I know it shocks her a lot. But you will find, by the grace of God, me trying to live righteously, best to understand it. If you see me doing something that is ungodly, please tell me. Because I, if I mess up, I want to know it. I, I, I don't take it. I won't take it. You hate me. I think you love me. That's what I was created for. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> for with what for with what judgment you judge, you should be judged. That's fair. Mm -hmm. If I tell you you should be an alcoholic, then I should be an alcoholic. Now I'm gonna say this, make some people mad, get mad, I don't care. If I tell my child I shouldn't smoke, I shouldn't smoke. Oh, oh that hurt preacher. Boy it does me too. If I tell my child I shouldn't uh, that you shouldn't get drunk, why do I drink a beer? Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Mm -hmm. Would you call that a hypocrite? Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. And verse three interprets verse two. Yeah, don't get don't get ahead of me now. Okay. <laughs> you know, when your children are young, they'll they'll listen more to what you say. When they get older, they look at what, what you, you do. do. Right. Exactly. What they say the first first. Six years or seven years. Who said that? One of the. Oh, I'm trying to think. Who, who wrote 1984? George Orwell. Orwell. Yeah. I think he said, "Give me a child." I think it was him that said, "Give me a child for the first seven years, and I'll have him for life." If he didn't say, somebody did. <laughs> well, I really thought it was Addison, but maybe I'm serious. <laughs> you can take claim for it. Yeah. <laughs> and again, you should you should be judged. I said for that for with what judgment you judge, you should be judged, and with what measure you meet, I mean, give, should we give a measure to you again? So before you get in the battle, you make sure you're walking righteously. You remember the time when the seven sons of Sceva tried to cast out the devil? Mm -hmm. yeah, well, they, they didn't. The name of Paul, who's Christ, the, the, the name of Christ that Paul preached, they had their theory right, but they weren't walking in, in the power themselves. What happened to them? The well, demon spirits jumped on them and beat them up. Beat them up, and stripped, stripped them naked. naked. Yeah. You know what? That, that's, just, that's the same thing the Catholic Church does. They, they put an intermediary between you and God. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what, when they were saying, using Paul's name, they were using the intermediary. No, I'm not God. That's very true. Good point. Yeah. Good point. Mm -hmm. It says, And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considereth not the beam that is in thine own eye? In other words, why are you judging that man when you got something bit bigger than that in you? See, this is why I'm talking about righteous judgment. Not that we're perfect, but we, we are believers. And we're walking righteous. We know how. We need to show you. Not, we're, not, we're not mad at you, people. We love you. We want you to know what's right. We want you to come to Christ. I can't explain to you the peace I have in my heart when I go to bed at night. Most usually. Not always. Sometimes I have things in my heart and mind. I lay my head on the pillow and know that I'm okay for the next day. Whether awake or not, I'll be all right. I just turn to say one. If I have another 10 years, I'll be doing well. Another 20, I'll be doing very well. Right? So, I want to know every day that I'm okay with Christ. Is that not important? So, I'm not throwing stones at them. I'm trying to offer you the same gift He gave me. Wednesday night's program coming up this Wednesday night, a lady named Laura Perry who was, who was a lesbian. She was sharing her testimony. 
What if? Now, what if that testimony reaches one soul? What's that worth? Amen. <laughs> What's it worth? That's 9 11. And I'll probably say a few words about 9 11, but that's been 18 years ago. And that, nothing's ever going to change that. The story's the story. Not, no matter how much you expose it, and we should, it's not going to change it. Nobody's going to be punished for it. You know that. Well, the, the guilty parties, America and Israel, they're going to be judged on that. Never. It's, it's over. <laughs> but a soul being saved because a, a, an ex lesbian reaches out to them is worth more than that 9 11 ever will be. Yeah. Amen. Bill, I can see your brain working, but you're not saying that. Well, I was just thinking, you know, we're not to lean to our own understandings because if you don't know God's mind, it doesn't make sense. But once you know God's mind, then it does make sense. But, of course, still, you're not supposed to lean to your own understanding. You know what I mean? No, but then you understand why, though. But you, you do understand yes. a lot more than that. Like you did before you were saved and you thought you were going to change the world because the yes. Constitution yeah. whatever. And Sure. Yeah. Yeah, I've been there, done that. Yeah, you remember that. You come to Christ realize, gee, without this, I can't do yeah. anything. That's when all the pieces came together. Yeah. Once I realized who was in charge and and and, and why, and his plan, then everything if everything falls in. Let it take a load off your shoulders too. Uh, yeah, it's it's it, we we surrender to him. It, it, we put it in his lap. No bay. That's just no bay. <laughs> Dick, you want to say anything? Mm. Cheryl, you want to say anything? All right. I don't want anybody not. You can speak up if you want to. Please feel like you. But this is family. This is I'm preaching and teaching, but this is important. Y'all share. It says, oh, or how wilt thou say to thy brother, Let me pull pull out the moat out of thine eye, and behold, a beam is in thine own eye. Thou hypocrite. Do you see what I just said? Mm -hmm. You're not living righteously either. You're a hypocrite. So how can you judge? Right. Pass me a beer, and don't you dare touch one. It's a sin. Give me one. Is that a hypocrite? Yes. Mm -hmm. That's the same as saying that you repent of that sin and you practice the same sin? Exactly. Okay. That's what it boils down to. Mm -hmm. We're going to show a little bit later another, another another part of this lesson about when the, the woman brought in to commit the adultery. We're going to find out why Christ didn't say stone her because it's in there. I just I'm running for Congress. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what I do, I can't do it. <clears throat> Just remember that. <clears throat> anyway, thou hypocrite, first cast thy beam out of thine own eye. I said that. Uh, where to go? Where did they leave off at? Thou hypocrite, <coughs> first cast out the beam out of thine own eye. In other words, make it right with Christ in your own life. Get that straightened up. Then show the other person how they can do the same thing. Right. Isn't there a difference between telling you idiot or saying, "Let me show you how you do this." Now, that doesn't mean you don't stand up to them. If they're, if, they're, if they're determined to keep on going, you tell them to go into hell, move on. But you offer to them a hope. How many of your glass may offer hope to you? That's right. <laughs> if, if back in 1971, last Wednesday night of June, if mm -hmm. Bobby McMahon hadn't preached a little bit before the prayer meeting and offered me hope, I'd still be living in the world. If I hadn't been engaged, been engaged this young lady took me to church, I'd still be living in the world. I say this humbly before God, and I thank you every day for my help me. One minute for her, I'd probably be in hell. I, I, tease, I tease her mercilessly because I, I love her. That's my way of showing love. But she's that important to me. I don't take that as a light thing. I don't. November make 48 years of her being, being my side. Amen. Not behind me. Mm -hmm. not, not a servant. as my help meet. And she's a lot of my strength, Joe. Mm -hmm. yeah. How'd you survive 48 years? Even though you're a booger. Him survive. Even though you're a booger, too, right? I'm a booger. I am. I know it. <laughs> but she knows that's how I love. You know, when I, when I tease I tease Lynn, I love Lynn. I can't tell you how much I love Lynn. It's a love that is pure of God. And it's a real love for Lynn. She's my sister. When I hug her, I want to hug her as hard as squeeze her in two, but I don't want to hurt her, so I don't do that. But because I love her. Is that fair? I kiss from the cheek. I kiss feel the cheek. Because I love my brother. Why can't we understand that this is not built on men's feelings and fuzzy wuzzy love? This is God's love. And God's love demands that we tell the truth. Let's go a little further here. Feelings don't matter. No, they don't. Feelings they're, will... they're a blessing generally. Feelings can take you to hell. A lot of, and I say this totally out of pure love. But a lot of people, I think, go to the altar on emotion and never, not really repentance. They come back to the same person, but they, they, they feel better, but they haven't been changed. Right. 
We'll do a teaching time converted. on conversion, okay? we got about four minutes left. I guess I better stop from that right now, but we'll, we'll get back this next time we get together. We're back here on the 21st, I think it is. Lord willing. we got about four minutes left, and I want to give everybody a chance here to say something if you want to. If you want to call, you got four minutes, do call, okay? Anybody wants to add anything or say anything? Been yes. Very good. Thank you, Dickie. You're quite welcome. How much are you paying, Butch? <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, getting back to verses one through three on this, I, I've heard you know, do not judge. There's a shirt that I wear once in a while. Says sodomites and lesbians are worthy of death. Well, we know Scripture says that. But I've had a Christian actually, a family member actually said, "Well, that shirt offends me." But she says, all we have to do is just get them in the church and pray for them, get them converted, get them born again, and get them filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. But they don't realize in their church that I've never once, I've never, you know, every time I visit, I never heard once righteousness spoken. We are not allowed to judge. Verse 3 of this backs up verse 1 and 2. It interprets it. Yes, that would be Verse 4. Yes pulls it all together. We can't just take one verse and say, hey, here's where it is. The whole Bible is based on this one verse. And we can't do that. To preach grace to a sinner is like it's feeding them cotton candy. It means nothing to them. It's talking to a piece of furniture. It is. It's no good. They have to understand they need grace. They need to know that sin is sin. Yeah. Anybody else want to say anything? Well, we also need to feel confident that I'm not perfect. Sure. If I know that person's doing not right, I'm going to, in love, tell them. I, I mean, I still have the whatever in my eye. We all do. I'm going to yep. get better. Yep. yep. But I still need to do that to help. That that is that is the love of Christ. That is right. But when, when Christ, we'll get later on, when Christ rebuked the Pharisees, he hated what they were, but he died for their sins. Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm saying to this? When you see a brother or sister stumbling and falling. You tell them. And you love them and you're concerned for them. It's your job. But today the to church. have an ho- apologetic argument with Scripture. It's your duty. Well, That's the most love that you can give to another human being. It is. You it approach them with love and what is love. The doesn't do that anymore, Addison. What right. is love? It's, not, it's not feeling. The love not feeling. Love is a person. Mm-hmm. That's true. The creation of our he's, 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 it's, it's God. God is it's love. <laughs> okay, we're gonna close the day, I guess, in and well, I've enjoyed this. Hope you all have. And when I study the scripture, sometimes it gets me just all over me, and I get excited, and, and I sometimes get carried away. I don't mean to, but I, I, I'm trying to get the whole picture in that yes, we need to judge, and yes, we need to offer grace. Amen. But they go hand in hand. Mm-hmm. One without the other is no good. Right? Mm-hmm. Too much law is, is, just, is, is damning, and too much, too little grace is, is, is damning also. Mm-hmm. You follow what I'm saying? You got to have the two. Mm-hmm. So when I say we need to judge, I'm telling you, you need to judge righteously. You need to expose sin and fight sin and fight the Satan's kingdom, but at the same time, offer healing if to accept it. But if they don't accept mm-hmm. it, it's not your job to cry over, it's your job to share and move on to somebody else. Just take the dust off your feet and go on. Scales have Amen. to be level. If you've got too much love, then it's damnation to the person you're trying to help. It is. It's it's mm-hmm. death. It's yeah. damnation. Good Hell's point. Hard. Good point. Yeah, the leaders have, can also drive them away. If you have too much <clears throat> judgment without love, then there's not any drawing power. You're not going to hear what yeah, you say. Turns them off. Because he says that God is love, and that's what draws them into the churches. And a friend that I've known all my life told to the other day in the church really they a lot of separated from a church because a church member that hasn't been corrected in any way because of adultery mm-hmm, mm-hmm. is still going mm-hmm. and she said I, I can't that, you know yeah. and I said Kay hey, isn't it sad that if someone's looking for a church <coughs> that needs worship and needs a support of a church there's nowhere to tell them to go I said not even in the community we live in and we've known there was good churches. And she said, I know. All right, folks, we love you. you got to close. See you in two weeks. Thanks for being here.